Okay, so we're going to do a set of three videos um, highlighting the gas furnace. The first video is going to be on components. We're basically going to go over all the components in the furnace, identify what they are, where they are. The second video is going to um, deal with servicing. We're actually going to get into this furnace. We're going to take the burners out, we're going to take the venter motor out, we're going to take the blower out, put them back in. Uh, so we'll disassemble, reassemble, um, look at the uh, circuit board, things like that. And the third video is going to be just basically a maintenance. So if you were to go into a, a home to do maintenance on a furnace, the things that you're going to look for when you do the maintenance. Um, so these videos are designed to support my labs. Um, in Centennial College, my heating HRAC 123 labs. Anybody can really use them, um, but they are designed to support the labs that I'll be doing um, for Centennial College. So, um, wanted to uh, just a shout out to uh, the furnace came from a company called Your Local HVAC Company. Um, so I looked them up, yourlocalhvaccompany.com. Um, I sent some feelers out to, to get a furnace. Uh, they told me that they had this one. It actually turned out really well. It's a it's, furnace is in actually really good shape. Um, a few minor things wrong, but I don't see any major problems with it. We're not going to connect it or fire it or anything. It's just basically for demonstration purposes. Um, so that, that we're going to use it for. So um, we're going to get started. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's um, go there, the 8-Track Iron channel. Uh, so go to that. Uh, lots of other videos there, some capstone videos, an intro video, and some other cool stuff. So have a look at that stuff. Uh, and again, um, the next, these three videos, we're going to do three videos focusing on the gas furnace and maybe we'll do a few more after that uh, so um, when I walk up to this furnace before I do anything uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look just visual you're going to have a look at the furnace do I see anything obvious any damage to the cabinet any anything that's going to stand out before I even do anything have a quick look at the complete unit the other thing that before doing anything else I notice right off the bat, I see two connections up here, two vent connections. So that tells me it's a high efficiency furnace. And it tells me that when I install this, I can do it two different ways. I can do it direct vent or I can do it non-direct vent. And we'll describe that in a minute once we get the covers off. So those are the things I'm gonna look for before I do anything else. And I'm gonna take the covers off. So every furnace is a little bit different, but uh, usually just a few screws for the top door. And the top panel comes off. And then you see, we're going to go through all this stuff, and then I'll also take the lower door off. called the blower section. Let's see why. So there's where the blower is, the blower of the circuit board. Um, so as soon as you take this door off, there is a switch here, the door switch. Then it kills the power. As soon as I take this door off, the furnace will not operate unless I physically push this switch in or bypass it or whatever. It's not supposed to bypass it, but I need to make sure this is engaged before the furnace will operate. So let's start again the vent connections. So I have two ways that I can install this. If I do it non direct vent, this is the exhaust pipe. When I install this, I can connect just this pipe to the outside and it's going to exhaust the flue gases to the outside. This is the intake pipe. If I leave nothing on this, it's just going to take air in from the space. I can also pipe this to outside to make it direct vent. So then I have two pipes, one coming in, one going out. And I'm taking my 
combustion air from outside. You're gonna, through the course of your studies in heating, you will learn that there's a thing called combustion air. This furnace needs air to breathe for the flame to combust properly. So if this takes air from outside, you don't have to worry about anything inside, but if it takes air from inside in the furnace room, you need to make sure that there's sufficient combustion air available and there's code regulations that, that support that in order for this burner to function properly. <clears throat> okay, so burners are up here. Burners are at the top. This happens to have one, two, three, four burners at the top here. Orifices, venturis, all up there. Manifold, gas valve right here is the gas valve. Gas pipe comes out the side. Obviously, it's not connected to anything, but the gas pipe is there. Um, so we will take this out later. Um, the next video will take this out, and we're going to just re disassemble this and reassemble it. But for just, we're just going to identify the components right now. Burners, gas valve. You'll notice up here two little black switches, limit switches. This furnace, I believe, actually has one, two, three, and you can't see it, but there's another one down here, four limit switches. These limit switches sense temperature. If anything in the furnace gets too hot, they open and the furnace shuts off. So they're safeties, they're in series, and if there's any problems with the burner at all, these will shut the system down. Those are the limit switches. They will, you could, and if you look at the diagram, which I should also highlight to you, this one's in not great shape, but anytime you take the blower door off, there is a wiring diagram. This is available, you can Google it as well, it's available, because like I said, this one's not in the best shape, but Everything in here is identified on that wiring diagram. Okay, so limit switches also under here. There is, on this side, there is an igniter. This happens to be a hot surface igniter. And on the other side of the burner is a sensor. So when this furnace ignites, there's a crossover tube between the burners. It ignites on this side, crosses over. If for any reason the burners don't ignite, the sensor will say no flame and the system will shut down. The circuit board will sense that that flame's not there and it will shut down. So the furnace will not operate. So it's a safety. Again, and again, we'll identify that better when we have the blower all or the burner all apart. We'll, uh, I'll show you those a little bit better. We'll actually take those out. I'll take the hot surface out. I'll take the sensor out. Um, and you can actually see those. Right here is the venter motor assembly. This venter motor is what moves the exhaust gases to outside. You're gonna hear a couple of terms. You're gonna hear induced draft motor or you're gonna hear forced draft motor. And you're gonna to have to know, you're gonna, it's one of the questions or one of the things you're gonna to have to know when you write your G3, G2 test is what's the difference between Induced draft or forced draft. Forced draft pushes through, induced draft sucks through. This happens to be an induced draft motor. So it's sucking the air. Air goes in the top where the burners are. This sucks it through the heat exchanger and blows it out to the outside. The flue gas is out to the outside. Incorporated with this, there are a number of pressure switches. Because if anything happens to plug up in this, if the vents happen to plug up, if the heat exchanger happens to plug up, if moisture happens to build up in here and fill up, if the drains plug, whatever, these pressure switches will sense that something is wrong and they'll shut the burner down. So again, safeties. Well, when we do the, uh, the service, we'll actually, I'll probably put a meter on these and I'll actually show you um, how these work, uh, we'll, we'll check for continuity and uh, put some pressure on these tubes and, and show you the switch opening and closing. Um, it will actually, we'll take this venter motor out as well as basically four screws and this whole assembly will come apart, come, come out 
and you can put the back in. These are not really not, vendor assemblies are not repairable. Um, you usually buy it as an assembly. So if something in this failed, if the motor happened to fail, um, generally you're not going to just replace the motor. You're going to just take this assembly out, you buy another assembly, the part number's there, um, and you just put this whole assembly in, and away you go. Um, so Venner motor, induced draft motor, it's a little bit confusing when you look on the uh, wiring diagram because the this is identified on the electrical diagram as an ID motor. So you think, okay, indoor motor. Well, it's not indoor motor, it's induced draft motor. So that's where the legend is important to uh, cross-reference with that because it's, it's easy to get confused between um, the labeling and, and what this really is, but it's induced draft. Uh, a few other things to notice up here. There's some holes in the cabinet, one hole for the gas pipe to go through. There's a hole here. This is the electrical connection right here for the, the furnace. So you run your 115 volt power supply, it connects here, your wire goes through here, connects to this wire, that's your power supply into the unit. So there'll be a switch up here in your power supply so that you can disconnect power to the unit. Um, piping, uh, and so under here we see the blower assembly and the circuit board. So your low voltage wiring is actually gonna to connect to this circuit board. Once we take this out in the next video, we'll show you the terminals on here a little bit better. We'll get closer here to uh, identify those terminals and show you where, where that's all connected. Um, the thing that I noticed with this is it actually looks to me like this area here has actually gotten a little bit damp. Um, so that's probably what happened to this furnace, uh, maybe something overflowed or something happened that some moisture got in here. Um, can't really look in the top. The heat exchanger is in the top here. If you look down, you can actually see the heat exchanger because this, these burners, the flame actually goes through the burners, goes through the heat exchanger, gets sucked out through here. This happens to be a high efficiency furnace, so uh, it takes a lot of the heat out of the flue gases before these flue gases are exhausted. As you can see, this is PVC pipe, this is plastic. So it does take a, a fair amount of temperature, but um, it, there's limits as to how hot these flue gases can be. Um, because so much heat is taken out of the flue gases, there's actually condensation happening in here. One of the uh, properties of flue gases is water vapor, um, H2O. So hopefully you've done that. I forget which module it is uh, that you go through the combustion process. But you know, you put CH4, um, so many, one part CH4, two parts oxygen, things combust and what comes out? CO2 comes out, H2O comes out, heat comes out. So that's part of the combustion process that you really need to understand. Um, hey, if there was duct work connected to this, there would be a return air duct on this side. There's a big hole here that I have covered up, so that I did, did just temporarily put a filter in here, so we'll actually look at that a little bit closer later. Um, so that's uh, pretty much all the components of the furnace. So, you know, it looks, when you first take the covers off, it does look a little bit complicated but it's really not that complicated. It is quite simple. Any of this stuff, again, is identified on the wiring diagram. Um, for those of you that will be in, in my class uh, down the road, we are gonna go through the, the manuals, the, the um, installation manual, the service manual, the specification manual, and look at full different information out of those manuals so you know where that information uh, can be found so things to look forward to so that's pretty much it for the components side of the video so we'll uh, Wrap this one up and we'll come back the next video We're going to look at service and again, this will probably be a little bit longer because we're actually physically going to take some of this stuff out. we're going to take the burner out. We're going to take the induced draft motor out. We're going to take the blower out um, and we'll Give you a good good idea of uh, how the stuff comes apart what to look for really not that difficult to take apart. They're, they're pretty foolproof to take apart, put back together again. Um, this blower, you think, holy crap, how's that gonna come out? But it's, there's actually rails under here. Uh, it's just two screws, you undo two screws, the whole blower assembly pulls out. Pretty straightforward. 
Um, so something to look forward to in the next video. So anyways, let's wrap up for today. Uh, so those are the furnace components. Again, um, subscribe, like. Thanks to local HVAC team for uh, helping me out getting the furnace. And uh, we'll uh, see you in the next video.